Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The Second World War proved that having a powerful navy and a powerful army was virtually useless, unless you could combine the two. During this conflict, the U.S. Navy recognized the need for specialized ships that could transport troops and equipment directly onto enemy shores. In 1976, the country commissioned its first amphibious assault ship, the USS Tarawa. The 820-foot vessel's designated mission was to support Marine Corps amphibious operations using aircraft, boats, and other vehicles. Modern amphibious assault ships like the USS Bataan still maintain the same function, even if the technology around that mission has advanced considerably. The Bataan is a WASP-class vessel and was first introduced in 1996. It is 843 feet long, with a large flat flight deck spanning the entire surface of the ship. Though it may look like a small aircraft carrier and perform many of the same duties, the Bataan and other amphibious assault ships only carry vertical and short takeoff and landing aircraft. This refers to any range of helicopters. As well as planes like the AV-8B Harrier II, the F-35B, and the MV-22 Osprey. Depending on the mission, the Bataan will carry any combination of aircraft as well as a number of vehicles and personnel. Typically, a WASP-class vessel like this will have a complement of around 66 officers and 1,000 crew. On top of this, up to 2,000 Marines might be on board at any given time. Living on board one of these vessels is not unlike being on any other large naval ship. Crews tend to sleep in cramped quarters in order to maximize space. However, there are many facilities on board to help break up the monotony of the mission. From mess halls and gymnasiums to recreation areas and laundry, most crew members and Marines have access to whatever they might need. Indeed, like aircraft carriers, these ships were designed to function as floating cities. There are medical facilities. and storage areas carrying multiple weeks worth of food and supplies. All crew members and Marines are assigned specific duties whenever the ship is underway. Generally, the day is divided into three duty shifts.
with each team performing maintenance, operations, security, and training at various intervals. Though the engine room is often considered the most important part of any military vessel, the mess hall is certainly the heart of the ship. Here, food service technicians and culinary specialists' primary responsibility is to prepare and serve food for the crew members, which typically consists of around 12,000 meals per day. These men and women are also tasked with menu planning, food preparation, and the safe and efficient operation of the ship's galley. Most importantly, it's their job to oversee the ship's food inventory and ensure that everything is properly stored and rotated. One mistake or improperly stored food item can lead to an outbreak of illness or force the ship to discard weeks worth of supplies. Another important part of the ship is the laundry. Since these vessels involve thousands of people sharing confined spaces, properly cleaning one's clothes and sheets is not just a courtesy, but a medical necessity. Amphibious assault ships are among the most advanced vessels in the U.S. fleet. As such, they require constant maintenance and upkeep. The same goes for the dozens of helicopters, aircraft, and landing craft stored aboard the vessel. One of the most important members of the ship's crew is the whole maintenance technician. These men and women are responsible for maintaining and repairing the internal and external hull, as well as the structural components and associated equipment. On a given day, they may be asked to handle welding and brazing, sheet metal fabrication, or perform corrosion and damage control on at-risk components. What really sets the amphibious assault ship apart from other vessels is its well deck. The well deck is a large, watertight area located aft of the ship. It sits just above sea level, but can be flooded to allow for the loading and unloading of amphibious vehicles and landing craft. These decks are usually large enough to accommodate a variety of unique vessels at once. Because they can simply launch themselves out of the deck and into the ocean, these landing craft can be used for various mission types. Including beach landings, humanitarian missions, and military incursions. The deck is guarded by two massive retractable doors, which typically remain closed when the vessel is underway. However, due to the vessel's unique design, the well deck can deploy hundreds of troops in mere minutes. When a mission does not call for the use of landing craft, amphibious assault ships can deploy a wide range of attack, defense, and transport aircraft. 
Due to the reduced size of the flight deck, only planes capable of taking off vertically or nearly vertically are employed aboard these ships. Depending on the mission and weather conditions, these aircraft will either be stored atop the flight deck or in the hangar bay. These massive enclosed areas not only allow for the storage of planes and helicopters, but maintenance and training as well. Whenever possible, seawater will be pumped through a series of hoses so that the assault ship's crew can wash down the flight deck. This helps remove corrosives like oil and jet fuel, while ensuring no loose debris is on the deck. Such debris can be sucked into jet intakes, causing serious damage to the aircraft. In some cases, they can also pose a risk to the men and women on the flight deck. The flight deck of an amphibious assault ship is a hectic environment with little room for error. Here, day-to-day -day operations involve launching and recovering various types of aircraft. Including hybrid craft like the V-22 Osprey. This unique tilt rotor vehicle is designed to transport troops from ship to shore and back again. It is one of the mainstays aboard an amphibious assault ship. Of course, taking off and landing is no simple process. It requires coordination and communication between flight deck personnel, aircraft crews, and marine commanders in the tower. The same care goes into launch and recovery operations performed in the well deck. This massive area is approximately 266 feet long, 50 feet wide, and has a height of 28 feet. It can deploy hovercraft, assault vehicles, and even standard land vehicles using its multi-purpose ramp. Perhaps most impressive of these is the LCAC, or Landing Craft Air Cushion. First introduced in the mid-1980s, the LCAC is 87 feet long and can carry over 75 tons of equipment and vehicles. Unlike traditional well deck vehicles, it travels on top of the water. This allows it to reach speeds of more than 45 miles per hour while fully loaded and 80 miles per hour when empty. As a result, it's the fastest way to get large numbers of troops and their cargo ashore at one time. Though roughly 80 years have passed since World War II, some of the U.S. Navy's amphibious assault vehicles remain quite similar to those used in the European invasion. These tracked AAVs were first introduced in the early 1970s. They are basically tanks, measuring around 24 feet long and weigh as much as 30 tons. However, they are also capable of utilizing a small motor in the rear to travel through the water.
the average AAV is heavily armed and armored, carrying three crew members and up to 21 Marines at one time. When deployed, they can simply drive out of the well deck and directly into the ocean, where they will make their way to shore at speeds of less than 10 miles per hour. Once on land, however, these massive vehicles can challenge almost any enemy position with lethal efficiency. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.